Hi guys, so this video is a build off challenge and it's between me, Bill at Bill Making Stuff and Gert at Dark Matter Workshop and our challenge is to build some scatter terrain only using one spray bottle. So this certainly is going to be a challenge for me as I don't really do much in the way of scratch bashing but I'm always up for building things so let's get started. So here we go, I'm going to make something out of this plastic bottle, not sure what yet but I guess the first thing you need to do really is to take it all apart. I've seen a lot of videos where basically they just sort of like put it on the table and then smack it and it should really just break into loads of bits but obviously that's a lie and it doesn't work that way so I'll have to do it the old fashioned way and basically just pull it apart I don't know if this bit screws off or pops off obviously I've never taken one of these apart before so I don't quite know how it's meant to uh, come apart but it seems to have bent my little tool uh, I'm not too sure how to get into this little thing there's no real gaps, there's no little clips um, don't know, I'm guessing a bit of brute force. Uh, I would be hitting it with a hammer by now, but I haven't got a hammer. But I've got a saw, so we'll have a go at sawing it. And that's doing absolutely nothing. So, okay. Obviously, I'm not going to be beat, so we'll get out a different tool. And we'll have a go with this one. Right tool for the right job and all that. Alright, I'll see you back in five minutes. Okay, so obviously, I didn't really use the jigsaw there, guys. So don't obviously use that. Um, I did manage to just prise it apart with my hands and some pliers and bits and bobs. Um, so yes, yeah, so these are the bits that I've got. So I've got no real plans or reference pictures or anything to show what I'm going to make from this. Um, but something I've always kind of wanted to make, I guess, is a orc submarine. So this seems a, a prime time to have a go at making one of those bad boys. So for a moment, I'm just going to cut a few bits up, see what I've got to work with. I mean, this could make part of the uh, the main sort of submarine body. Um, basically, I obviously want it at an angle because I want it so it's like it's coming out of the ground, or it's buried in the ground, or something like that. Anyway, um, so yes, yeah, so I'm just going to cut this thing at an angle, and then kind of go from there, really. So that's kind of why I really like these challenges, as they take you out of your comfort zone. Um, basically make you sort of think out of the box and well just think more about what you've got to do what you can make by using the materials you have so this bottle only really has a few sort of parts in it and well this one obviously looks more like it'd be good for a gun of some sort so that's exactly what I'm gonna be using it for just gonna trim away a few bits and there we go that can kind of go somewhere on here um, we've got this other little bit which again looks like the top of a submarine um, and it's just a case of really sort of playing around, putting them in different places, seeing what works and see what, uh, what looks best really. So I've decided to go with the other half of the bottle I cut up, um, just because obviously it can accommodate this other little clear bit from the bottle. I don't know any of the technical terms, basically it's all just bottle parts to me. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of liking how this bit's coming out. Obviously I've got a few spare bits now, which I'm not too sure what to do with. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of gluing these bits together and seeing what happens. So I'm going to use my non-sharp pokey tool now um, just to basically make some rivets in this thing just as again because it's an orc kind of build I feel like it should be sort of made up of loads of panels put together um, and yeah I'm finding this the best way now of making small rivets is by poking them so I'm just going to scratch in some sort of like panels into the plastic um, so that doesn't look too bad and then the idea is once I've got plenty of panels here I can then just add more and more and more rivets. So whilst these rivets are obviously easy to do, because they are so small, means I am having to do loads and loads and loads. Um, and sometimes you know you get to start something and you think, oh, this is a really good idea. And then halfway through you think, oh wow, this is a good idea, but it's gonna take me forever. And there we go, I think the end result is definitely worth the, uh, the time and effort spent on it. So now I can just get on with gluing some bits on. So starting obviously with this, uh, this front bit, which is obviously going to make up the front of this, uh, well it's definitely going to be a submarine now. Um, and then obviously gluing on the, uh, the sort of gun bit. Um, I'm going to do a few more bits of that to make it look a bit more gunnish. And then obviously the back bit just needs um, cutting in just so it sort of lays in flush. So 
So I'm pleased with how this is looking now. And I'm just going to trim up the bottom bit just so it lays flush. Um, as at the moment it's a bit wibbly wobbly. So using a good old little Dremel tool I can cut that bit off. And the same again with the bits at the back, I can just trim them bits down too. So I've got a few other little bits from inside the bottle that I'm just going to glue onto the outside. Just to basically break up the fact that it is all like those flat panels. So I'm just checking the size of things with my little lonely orc. And it's a nice little area at the back that um, he could stand up on. So basically I'm just going to cut out a little circle from this other bit of plastic that I've got. Um, just to fill in that area really. So the thing I really like about this challenge is the fact that we are only using the one bottle. So really you have to be careful on what you try and do with this build. As obviously you've only got so much in a way of resources. But I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. And I've got a few actually little pieces here that I can sort of, uh, well, basically I want to make a little periscope. As obviously all submarines have periscopes. Even the orc ones. So everything the orcs build basically needs repairing. And to do that they obviously just slap on more little panels that are riveted basically. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to cut up some small little bits. And then using my little pokey tool again, I'm going to poke out some more rivets. Because I haven't obviously poked out enough rivets so far in this build. And I need to hit my quota of at least doing 2000. So here's a few more. And then once the panels are done they can just get slapped on here and there and well... Anywhere else I think that um, some panels should be slapped on, really. So I just need to cover up the back bit where the captain's going to sit. That looks okay. And then basically I've got loads of little bits that I've cut off and trimmed off everywhere. So I'm going to keep all these bits and I'm going to turn this into a kind of like a scrapyard sort of build now. And obviously every orc vehicle needs a little orc face, so that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Again, just using another piece of the uh, the plastic bottle that I cut up. Do a rough freehand picture and then just trim it out, basically. So there's quite a few odds and ends and bits and pieces sort of left over. But I can't really think of what I could make with these bits because there's not really enough to make something sort of substantial. So basically, is that like I say, I'm just going to make a scrap yard now. Um, so any, any of these little bits, I'm just going to cut up even smaller. There's some nice irregular little shapes here. Uh, and once it's all painted, obviously it'll look like bits of metal that would possibly have come from this submarine, or possibly any other vehicles that have been chucked in this little pile. So as this is quite a fiddly little thing, if I try to glue this with normal glue, I find I'm going to find it a lot easier just using the super glue, because obviously it's a lot thicker, and it's easier just to place stuff in it, on it, and around it, basically. There's no real science to this. This really is just a case of cutting bits up, placing them around, and just basically filling up the whole of this bottom area, so you can't see the bottom of the sub. And I'm obviously doing this on some greaseproof paper, just so the glue doesn't stick to, well, whatever's underneath basically. So this way, once it's all done, it'll just be easy to peel it off. And there we go, it's kind of pretty much done now, so I'm, I'm kind of pleased with how this has turned out. I've always wanted to make an orc sub for some time. Uh, obviously this is only like half an orc sub, but that's fine. And there, there you go, so it comes off nice and easy off the, uh, the greaseproof paper. It doesn't stick to it at all. So yeah, it's looking good. So now it's all ready to prime and then get some paint on this bad boy. But obviously I've still got quite a lot of bits left over. Uh, basically I didn't want to put too many bits on the little build. So I had a cunning plan. I'm going to see if I can melt this stuff in some acetone. Because if I can, then obviously I can have a go at making something, well, making anything out of this stuff then really. So I'm going to cut them to smaller pieces just so it fits in the jar. And then do the usual kind of thing, let it sit in there for well, a good 8 to 12 hours or more. Um, and then see if this, this can be melted. Obviously I'm, the only stuff I have really melted is the, uh, the sprues from Warhammer. So I'm not too sure what kind of plastics there are. But we'll soon find out, so we'll give it 12 hours and see how it comes out. And there we go, 12 hours later it's done nothing. Apart from take off any red marker pen that I'd, I'd drawn on this thing. 
So, conclusion is, you can't melt this stuff. Never mind. So, back to the sub, which I've primed in a nice black colour. As basically, I want to paint this so it looks like a bit of a rust bucket, and then obviously paint a bit of red on top afterwards. So, I'm going to have a go at using a new little spray thingy that I've got, the airbrush, whatever it's called. And this one's basically like a self-contained little unit. You just charge it up and then have a go at using it. So I have tried using it on some paper and it comes out okay, but obviously you have to mix quite a lot of thinner in this, uh, more than you would normally, which is why it's coming out so faint. And I think obviously if this was um, sprayed white, then perhaps it would work. But on the black, it's not. So I'm going to go back to using the brush. So I'm using a nice big makeup brush, just so I can get lots of paint on here, nice and quick. Uh, as this is going to be like a rusty effect, it doesn't need to be too neat, well it doesn't need to be neat at all this bit. Uh, in fact, if anything, the, uh, the less neater the better. So some areas are going to have like lots of brown on it, some areas it's going to have quite a lot of the, uh, the black coming through. Um, yeah, it's just a case of getting this stuff on nice and quick, letting it dry. Might give it another little coat here and there. So I'm going to try something new for the, uh, the rust, and basically I'm just going to add in some grout, just to make the rust a bit thicker. So obviously mixing it with the, uh, the brown paint, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little sponge, and then just sponge it on, just so obviously this makes it more uneven. Um, but obviously because it's got the grout in it, it's going to be quite thick and lumpy in certain areas, and I think that will work really well for the effect of the, the rust sort of bubbling up through the, uh, the metal. So okay, it's always good to try different things out, and uh, yeah, we'll give this a go. And then using the good old Vallejo uh, model wash, which I really enjoy using this stuff. It's lovely and watery, and just sort of goes on, and then just drips around. So yeah, again, no real special pattern for this, just higgledy piggledy. Uh, I like to get it in where the, the gaps are as well, because I feel that's where a lot of rust could come through. So I'm really pleased with how that's looking now, and now I'm just going to go around and give it a dry brush, with a bit of silver, and obviously this will just hit all the edges um, and obviously highlight it with a bit of silver, which will look good. So I can't wait to see what Bill and Gert have, uh, have come up with. So don't forget guys, after this video is finished, go check their, their ones out. There are links in the descriptions to their videos, um, and that's where I'll certainly be checking them out. So there's only a couple of guns on this sub, so obviously it definitely needs more DACA. Uh, but yeah, so in this case I'm just going to try and give the uh, the guns a bit of a look where they've been used and obviously they've heated up and it's discoloured the ends of the uh, the barrels. Um, again, I'm just trying to do little techniques here, I mean there's better ways of doing this I'm sure. Uh, but again, and the bottom, bottom line is, I'm having fun doing this, um, which is the main thing. As it's an orc submarine, obviously it needs to be painted red, because in its day it would have gone fast, obviously. Um, so again, I'm using a sponge just to dab on the, the paint, and it certainly gives it a good effect of it looking like it's sort of flaking away and revealing basically the rust and the silver that's underneath. And basically it's just a fun way of painting with a sponge. Just like we all used to do when we were kids at school. Or maybe some of you are still kids at school. Either way, this is definitely a fun way to paint. So now I'm just going to go over again where the uh, the thick, lumpy, grouty areas are. Just with a dark brown, just again, so it's more like there's rust coming through. And I'm just going to dab it with a bit of paper, just to take the edge off, and it just sort of smudges it out a bit. Just makes it a bit more uneven, and less painted looking. And I'll just kind of repeat this process all over the build, as well as doing it in any like, nooks and crannies and anywhere I think might, uh, might be some rust coming through. And then I'm just going to finish off by painting the skull green, because obviously, well, most orcs are green. Well, I've seen a few blue ones and a couple of pale skin ones, but in this case, it's definitely going to be a green skin. And as it is an orc build, we need to try and get the checkerboard pattern in. Uh, so for this I just found a little panel which I think will work well. And I'm just going to paint some white on first. Again, a little bit higgledy piggledy because I still want it to look as though the rust has eaten into this bit as well. And then to make it easier to do the squares, I'm going to use a fine marker pen. Just so I can sort of like roughly mark out the squares. 
and then basically colour it in using this fine marker. It's definitely a nice simple way to get these little squares in rather than trying to use a, a small fine brush and try and do them with that. So yeah, using a little pen, far easier. So I recently bought some acrylic paint markers um, just to make it easier to obviously do little highlights or in this case do some little numbers. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying these out for the first time. And basically these should be able to paint on or draw on anything. So I'm going to do a little bit of graffiti on this as well. Um, and obviously, well, the simplest graffiti I could think of was just their, uh, their war sort of, um, sort of shout on it. Um, but as you'll see in a second, I kind of got a bit carried away doing the A's and then I forgot the G. So I'm blaming this obviously on the orcs that would have, um, that would have done the graffiti. Obviously this dwarf, uh, this dwarf, this orc, uh, well, can't spell basically, which I'm sure not many of them can. So yes, yeah, so I did it on purpose. I left the G out just to make it more realistic that it was done by an orc. Uh, and that's my excuse and that's the one I'll be using all the time. So it's kind of like a war, rather than a war. <laughs> and there we go guys, that's that complete. I hope you enjoyed the little build. It's been fun making something out of just one sort of bottle. As you really have to sort of think outside the box and work out how you can do it and making sure you've got enough material. If you have enjoyed the build guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Drop some comments down below as I love reading what you say. And if you are new here guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell as I do make videos every week. A big thank you to all my patrons for helping support the channel as I am trying really hard now to make this my full time job. As I absolutely love making these videos and obviously love making things. There is a link in the description showing how you can become a patron. It only costs £1 a month and it does give you access to all the behind the scenes work in progress pictures of everything I'm currently working on. Don't forget to go and check out what Bill and Gert have made guys, there are links in the description. And when you do pop over there, again don't forget to drop them some comments, let them know what you thought of their, their video and mine and everyone's basically. Okay guys, that's it. Bye for now.